Let's join the worship center at Life Church, where the service is already in progress. We're so delighted that you're here in service this morning. Not because I'm ministering, but because it's important that we come to the house of God. The Word says, forsake not the assembling of yourself together, as the manner of some is. And so much more as you see the day of Christ approaching. This world is getting close to wrapping up for us as believers. We're, we don't have much more time out here. You can look around and all the signs of Christ's coming are prevalent today. But in the midst of all of that, we don't have to hang our head in sorrow. We don't have to act like we have no hope. Because we do have help. We can expect a miracle and receive a miracle today. And we're going to talk about expediting miracles. As I was slinging grass praying yesterday, I, I enjoy my time up on the tractor around the place. I was bush hogging because there's nothing else to do but pray. You know? uh, sometimes the tractor's so loud that making so much noise it. If you tried to sing to yourself, you couldn't hear it anyway. So it's a good time to pray. Because God can hear above all the tractor noise. And as I sling around, I didn't have a message yesterday until I was sitting on the track. I said, now God, what do you want me to share? He said, I want you to talk about miracles because everybody needs one. Amen. We need miracles. Sometimes we get it by His mercy. It was a miracle you woke up from your sleep last night. Amen. It's a miracle that when we go to bed and we know nothing, except sometimes some crazy dreams because we ate the wrong kind of food, and sometimes spiritual dreams because God wants to get a message to us. Uh, you know, it's amazing the body goes to sleep. God ordained it to go to sleep to rest. But it's a miracle that we wake up the next day. So every day that we get up above the ground six foot, we've got a miracle by the mercy of God. Amen? Amen. But sometimes we need not mercy, we need some grace. Amen? Amen? We need that miracle running to us and we need to be running toward a miracle because our problems are alive because we all face those. We know that. And so we're going to talk about problems and miracles today in our lives. The launching text, 2 Corinthians 2.14. I love this verse of Scripture. I quote it about daily to the devil. Now thanks be unto God, which causes us always to triumph in Christ. We always triumph in Christ. Meaning that we got a miracle running our way for us to triumph in Christ. Notice that if we're in Christ, we always triumph. The implication of that verse of Scripture, if we're not in Christ, we're not going to triumph. We may get mercy, we may get through. But we feel like we've been pulled through a bush backwards, you know. And everything <coughs> in a stripped away and all the frustration and all the heartache and all the trial and all the problem. God says we always trial and makes manifest the Savior or the fragrant of the realization of His knowledge about us in every place. Because we triumph in one situation, we're leaving the knowledge of how we triumph to others in that situation behind so they can pick it up too. Amen. Romans 8.31, what shall we say to these things that come against us? If God be, is He in your life? If God be. There are those that say they don't believe in God. What are they going to do? They're going to have to go it alone. But praise God, you and me don't have to go it alone. Hallelujah. If God be, and He is. If God be for us, and He is. Who or what can be against us. That's telling us we're going to triumph in the situation. 
You know what the problem is in the situation? We don't like going through the situation. That's why God spoke to us today, get our mind and our focus off of our problem and on to the promise. If God be for us, who or what can be against us? Nothing. Why? Because of Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. So, as I was meditating on this, the Lord brought me to the account of the crippled man, the paralytic, the infirm man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5. And specifically took me to this verse of Scripture. When God saw the infirm man lie, or lying by the pool of Bethesda, which means in the Hebrew tongue, a pool with five porches, and knew that he had been there a long time in that case, and the Scripture declares for 38 years, he said unto the man, Will thou be made whole? God is saying to us today, Do you want a miracle in your life? What you're facing, you may have faced all so many long years. God says, Do you really want a miracle in your life? You know what? I, I, I was praying one time for people in service. God gave me a word of knowledge to pray for man. He said, I won't be prayed for. He said, if I get healed, I'll lose my disability check. I thought, man, oh man. My blood pressure jot up. <laughs> I'm sure steam rolled out my ears and nostrils. I want to say devil come out of him. He don't want to be healed. He said, I'll lose my disability check. Some folk don't want to be healed. But I don't know about you. And when I get in a situation that's beyond me, I want some help, amen. amen. I, want some, I want a miracle in my life. Yes. And as we start this morning, what we got to do is settle this question I'm going to ask you that's not in the notes. Do you believe God does miracles today? Amen. Yes. You got to settle that issue before we go any further with miracles. Because there's some folk absolutely believe God don't do miracles anymore. We got to settle it. Do you believe that God does miracles today? Now let me be a lawyer giving my case for just a minute concerning this. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 the Word says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, did Jesus Christ do miracles in the yesterday? We can go to the Scripture and find absolutely He did. Matthew 8, 16. They brought unto Him those that were possessed with devils, those that were infirm, those that were sick, those that were paralyzed, those that were blame, lame and hot. And the Bible said He healed every one of them. If He did it yesterday, and the Word says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, what is my conclusion? My conclusion is He still does miracles today. Amen. Going beyond that, in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, it says He called twelve disciples together and endued them with power to cast out devils and heal the sick. So not only did Jesus do it, His disciples did it. And there are those today with theological terms, and I'm not better than them. Don't think I'm better than them. People got a right to believe whatever they want to believe. That's their choice. But going beyond that, in Acts chapter 9, we find the disciples casting out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead. But when they had gone off the scene, Apostle Paul was raised up, and he cast out devils, healed the sick, and even raised the dead. 
One night he was preaching and he preached along. A young man was sitting up in the window. And the young man fell asleep and fell out the window from the second floor and fell dead to the ground. Well, Paul just stopped preaching, went down, raised him up from the dead. They went back upstairs. He continued on preaching. I don't know how long he preached. So we find it all through the scripture yesterday. Well, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever must mean that he still does it today. And I conclude this in Matthew 19, 26. With God, all things are possible. So I don't know what you believe this morning, but I believe Jesus still does miracles today. Amen. Because I am a walking miracle. When I should have been dead from a heart attack with a heart main valve blocked off, 98%, I'm still living Hit by a log truck, head on, dual wheels run up my side of the vehicle, put me in the hospital five and a half months, I'm still living. Some folks call that happenstance. No, I call it a miracle. No greater miracle than God taking somebody deep in sin like I was and cleaning their life up and saving their wretched soul from sin, from the devil, from hell, and everything that comes against it. That is a miracle, none greater. He still, you know, it's absolutely strange. When Jesus was alive on the earth, they believed he could heal, but they didn't believe he could save. Now people believe that he can save, but they don't believe he can heal. It is a trick of the devil. We find it all through Scripture. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Now since I presented that course, let's get on into the meat. I hope you believe in miracles. Because there's going to come a time in your life when you need one. How do we expedite miracles? Now Jesus pours miracles out. It rains on the just and unjust. But how can I expedite? Because that's what we're interested in. If we believe in miracles, how can I get it expedited in my life? What must I do in order to expedite the miracles of God in my life? So we're going to talk about expediting miracles of God. Based on God can do it. Praise God. Number one, this one. Father, bless this word to the hearts of the people. And help me preach it. Number one. If we're going to expedite miracles in our life, we must establish ourselves in the presence of God. If we want God's help, we must get in the presence of God by staying out of sin. How do I know that? Because Psalm, David said in Psalm, the righteous cry, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. The righteous cry, the Lord hears and miracles flow unto them. Why righteous? Because they're in the presence of the Lord. He was made to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. we got to get out of sin. Isaiah 59 too. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid His face from you that He will not hear. Get out of sin and get into Christ so the righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. How I get in the presence of the Lord? Seek Him. Seek Him. Isaiah 55, 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. While you have opportunity, seek the Lord. Start your day seeking the Lord. Lord, I'm here and I want you in my life today. I want you to walk every step with me. I want you to help me. When I'm about to do something wrong, Lord, check me with the Holy Ghost that I'll have opportunity not to do it so that I stay in your presence and stay with you. Jeremiah 29, 13. And you shall seek me and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. When you lay everything else down and say, Lord, I want you. That's seeking God with all your heart. You know how it is. You guys, probably when you propose to your wife, you laid all the others aside and say, I want you. I want you. I want you. I want you. 
Christ laid all of us aside and says, I want you. He didn't really lay them aside, but he showed how much he wanted us by laying down his life for us. When we lay down our life for him, that's when we will find him. Amen? Amen. Mark 5, 28. The woman with the issue of blood, she said this, for she said, if I can just get in his presence and touch his clothes, I know this dog in translation, but she said, if I can but touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. How's she going to touch his clothes? Get in his presence, amen. amen. If I can just get in his presence and touch him, I will be whole. So, we have to establish ourselves in the presence of God. Not let anything move you from that. Number two, you have to equip yourself with the promise of God. Find the promise concerning your problem. You say, well, my problem is not listed in the Bible. Well, how about this one? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up in judgment against you condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is with me, saith God. Isaiah 54, 17. How about this one? Same as Senator Lunch today. If God be for me, this problem cannot be against me. Find your promise in the Word. Here's one, Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Thank you, Lord. If you can't find it specifically, find it generically, and there's three that are given to you. Why? 2 Corinthians 1.20 For all the promises, not some of the promises, all the promises of God in Him, in Christ, are yea and amen. Let it be so. Why? Unto the glory of God by us. The promises of God applied in our life brings glory to God. And God wants glory brought to Himself. He said glorify me. And so we bring glory to God when we find the promise and let it operate in our life. So if you want to if you want to expedite your miracle, equip yourself with the promise of God concerning the problem that you're facing. I think I made this statement. I don't know if I did. I think it was on Tuesday night, but I'm going to say it this morning. Does God answer unspoken requests? If he said, ask and it shall be given. I know I'm doing a play on words. But what if you went to God and said, Lord, I got this unspoken request. Would you meet it? He's going to say, what request? It's all right to ask somebody else to pray for you. But they got to speak the request about it to God. You can't say, God, I got this unspoken request. I want you to admit it. He don't know what you're talking about. He said, ask and it shall be given. Now, I know it's a play on words. Don't let that stop you from praying, praying for people. The emphasis is here is you've got to equip yourself with a promise. You've got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that promise or is for you that's in the Word of God. It is clearly spoken to you, for you, that God operates in your life. Number three, not only must you establish yourself in God's presence, equip yourself with God's promises, you must enrich yourself with God's Word. If you don't know God's Word, you can't obey it. And the Bible says you're destroyed for lack of knowledge. So you've got to know what the Word says about you. And over and over and over and over, if you look, you're going to find that God's got victory for you in every situation you face. Glory! We need to enrich ourselves with the Word. Enriching ourselves builds our faith so that we know we got this, we, we got something we need. We can say it. We can obey God in it. Hallelujah. And we can get results. 
when we enrich ourselves with them, you cannot leave this word out of your life and expect God to expedite miracles to you. I'm not condemning you. Don't take it as condemnation. Take it as instruction. We have to enrich ourselves with the Word of God. This is why I said in 2 Timothy 2 15, study to show yourself approved to God. A workman need not be ashamed, right with the word of truth. That's one reason I created the healing CD. It's nothing but scripture. Scripture after scripture after scripture. Music in the bright ground. Instruction concerning the scripture. And if you're having trouble with healing, get you one of these, plug it in your ears, hear the word, enrich yourself with the word, enrich yourself with the word. And pretty soon, as you listen to that, you will know that healing is for you. You say, well, why don't God heal everybody? I don't know. That sure don't stop me from believing that he heals. Because he's healed me. He's healed me. Enrich yourself with the Word. Enriching yourself with the Word builds your faith. Romans 10, 17, So then faith come by hearing, hear by the Word of the Lord. Hear, 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 hear. Mark 4, 24, Jesus said to them, Take heed what you hear, for what measure you meet or hear, it shall be measured unto you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. Glory to God. Well, manifold, megafold miracles happening in your life? Hear the word, hear the word, hear the word, hear the word, hear the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That way, one, you can obey it. Two, it builds your faith. And three, you'll know the promise. Everything we've talked about so far. Number four. Enunciate the miracle desire. You gotta say what you want. You gotta say what you want. God knows your heart, and out of your heart your mouth speaks. Let your heart speak out of your mouth what you want. God, I want to be healed of this plague. God, I want to get out of debt. God, I need peace in this situation. God, this person is plaguing me. Help me in this relationship. Help me get through this storm. Whatever it is. We have all kind of storms coming in our life. But did you know that Jesus stood up and spoke to the storm? Did you know the storms in your life have ears? The storm in your life has ears. Speak to the storm. Did you know Moses smote a rock when God said speak to the rock? And that's the reason he didn't go into the promised land because he didn't obey God? Speak to your storm. Not about your storm. Speak to the storm. <coughs> Jesus took five biscuit and two brim and spoke over it and fed 5,000. When he blessed it, break it, he blessed it, he spoke over it and it fed 5,000 people. Jesus spoke to a fig tree and it died because it didn't have any fruit on it. He said, because you don't have no fruit on it, you will not produce fruit from now on, you're dead. Next day they come by and I'm sure it was Peter, the disciples said, Lord, look at that tree. You cursed it yesterday and it's dead. He spoke specifically to this man that we use in the last day. He said, you want to be whole? Sometimes we, like that man, thank God for God's mercy. He said, I, 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 I don't have nobody to put me in the water. You know, I had to crawl over there and the angel just come down every once in a while and stirs up the water and the first one in gets healed. I had no man to put me in the water. His problem was he was looking to man. Don't look to man. Look past man. Look to God. Amen? Amen. And say what you want and begin to talk to your problem. 2 Corinthians 4.13 We have the same spirit of faith. Same spirit of faith of what? Jesus. 
According as it is written, I believe, therefore was spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. Mark 11, 23, look at this. For I say unto you, that whosoever, you are whosoever, shall say to this mountain, what mountain? The mountain that stands anyway. He's talking to a mountain here. He said, talk to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Say to the mountain. Be removed, be cast in the sea, shall not doubt his heart, believe those things which says come back. He'll have what? Whatsoever he says. We must enunciate the miracle into existence. Number five. Not only must we establish ourselves in God's presence, equip ourselves with God's promises, enrich ourselves with the word. Enunciate the miracle desired. We must expect the miracle to manifest. If you don't believe it, you can't receive it. That's what that verse says that we were just in. And I hope it's back up on the board. Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God. Mark eleven twenty three, whosoever says to the mountain stands in the way, be moved, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. You doubt, you go without cannot doubt. We have to stay in faith. Now what's going to happen when you stay in faith? The devil's going to come to try to rob you of your faith. That's why Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. The devil's going to come try to rob you of your faith. Stay in faith. Don't let nothing move you in believing that that miracle is yours. Stay in faith. you got to fight for it. If you want it, you got to fight for it. Who are you going to be fighting? The devil? You're going to be separating yourself from some folk because they're going to say, huh, God ain't going to do that for you. When Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, he put all the doubters out. You've got to stay in faith. And those that speaking negative in your life, you've got to say, I'll see you later. Later, Tater, I'm going. <coughs> You got to do it. Why? Because the devil is using them to rob you of your faith. You got to put the doubters out. If they're speaking negative in your life, say, see you later. Love you. Don't let anybody trump on your faith or America. I'm talking about nobody. I don't care who they are. I've seen people go visit somebody in the hospital. And I just got through praying the prayer of faith over them. And that person comes in and says, you know, my grandpa had that and he died three days later. I want to say, take my foot and say, hey, you see the door? Let me help you there. There's some people ignorant in the world that speak negativity. You cannot, you've got to insulate yourself from negativity to stay in faith. And that is not an easy job. It is not easy because we have naysayers all around us. But we got to stay in faith. You got to keep yourself pumped with the word. You got to continue to pray. You got to continue to do some other things we're going to talk about as we finish up the message here. But you got to stay in faith. Don't let anybody mess with your faith or your miracle. Because if you doubt, you go without. Hebrews 11:6. Without faith is it impossible to please God. He that comes to God, and we have, must believe that He is, and we do, and that He rewards them that diligently seek Him. You must stay in faith and continually seek the Lord and not talk negative about your situation. Romans 4.17 teaches us to imitate God and call those things that are not as though they already are. That's the reason when you sit, say, I'm healed. That's when you broke, say, I'm rich. 
that's when you frustrate and say, I got peace. We're not lying about our situation. We're speaking our situation in faith. We don't, we don't, we don't stick our head in the sand and try to ignore that there is a problem. But we're not speaking the problem. We're speaking answers. And we must do that to stay in faith. James 1, 6 and 7. Let him ask in faith. Who? Anybody that needs a miracle. Nothing wavered. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven by the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he'll receive anything from the Lord. You can't receive from the Lord. You said, thank you, Lord, I'm healed. And tomorrow's out, oh, Lord, I'm sick. I feel bad. I'm puking. I got fever. Nose running. Don't talk that kind of stuff. Just say I'm healed in the name of Jesus. And if you need to talk to somebody, just say, hey, I'm feeling puny. Pray for me. Oh. Don't magnify the problem. Hebrews 10, 23. It's not in your notes. Write it down. Hebrews 10, 23. On expected miracles, stand in faith. Hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering. For He, God, is faithful that promised. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 23. Number six. Endure delays because they are not denials. Sometimes God is having to orchestrate for your event. Delays are going to come. Why? Because the devil is going to try to be in there and mess things up. Sometimes God has to set certain things up. For example, if he's going to heal you through a doctor, you got to get the right doctor. He's got to get the right medicine. Or he has to do the right surgery. He has to cut out the right part. He has to stick in the right part. Sometimes God has to line things up. And God does heal by medicine as well as miraculous. I like the miraculous. Amen. Amen. I don't like to be cut on. And God will do the miraculous. But sometimes he does medicine. He said in heaven, the nations are healed from the leaves of the trees. That's in heaven. You want to be sick as heaven? No. That's when we get there, we'll be healed. Praise God. Amen. Delays are not denials. Delays will almost always be automatic. But denials are not automatic. Denials are when we give up on the miracle. I've said this, I don't know how many times in messages. My mother-in-law prayed for my father-in-law 50 years before he got right. And it took a visitation from heaven by God while up on his bed while he was asleep, coming, shaking his foot, waking him up, said, now's the time. Conviction set up on him. He got up and she prayed for him for 50 years. Betty and I prayed for him. Ever since we, our lives have been right with God in the marriage relationship, I don't know how many years that was, but we prayed for him too. Tried to talk to him. He wouldn't talk. He'd, get, he'd blow up and get mad and say, I don't hear it. We knew then we better shut up. But God honored a 50-year prayer. He's in heaven today. Died about three weeks after that. God gave him a visitation. Don't give up on your miracle. Delays are not denied. James 1, 4. Let patience have its perfect work, that you be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. 2 Timothy 2, 3. Therefore, endure hardness as a good shoulder of Jesus Christ. Delays are going to come. Endure the hardness when it comes. 1 Peter 4, 12, 13. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial, which is to try you as some strange thing done happen to you. But rejoice. Why? Because you're partaking in Christ's suffering that when His glory, which is His presence and His power is revealed, you'll be glad with exceeding joy. Glory to God. Why? Because He shows up right on time with His power and the miracle manifest. Number seven. 
in all of this, as you establish in yourself in the presence of God, keeping yourself there, equipping you with the promise of God, enriching you with the word of God, enunciating the miracle desired, expecting the miracle to manifest, enduring delays, express praise to God continually. This keeps you in God's presence. David said this way, Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. When his praise is continually in your mouth, you're continually in his presence. He inhabits the praise of his people. Nehemiah 10. This kicks in. He said, go your way. Eat the fat. That that tastes good. Drink the sweet. Send portions for them that don't have nothing. For this day is holy in the Lord. Don't be sorry. Don't be a whiny bag. Don't be cast down. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't whine, shine with the joy of the Lord. Number eight this morning, embarrass the devil your pain. And I did it last week, not going to do it this week, but if all you can do is say, ha, 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 devil. Laugh at the devil, rebuke him, and go on. Don't get into conversation with the devil. Tell the devil to shut up and get out. Ha, 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 ha. you got to go. Don't carry on the conversation with the devil. That's what he wants. When he got Adam and Eve converting, well, when he got Eve conversing over the piece of fruit, get her to look at it, get her to lust after it, get her to offer Adam some, ball fried and laid to the side with cornbread with it, they got in conversation messed up. Don't converse with the devil. All you do is tell him to go. Laugh at him, rebuke him, and tell him to go. You embarrass the devil with your pain. Don't give him any place. Listen to what God promised. 1 Peter 5.10 But the God of all grace, that's his ability to do for us what we can't do for ourselves, who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, God will make you perfect Establish strength and settle you. Why? Knowing that your miracle is on the way. When you're having to endure, you can count on your miracle is on the way. Stay in faith. Number nine this morning. Extricate others needing the miracle that you need. Help them get there. How? By declaring, prophesying, praying. Why? It's a fixed law of God. Whatever you sow, you will reap. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you because it's sowing and reaping law. You see somebody in need, help them. However you can. If it's only with a prayer, help them. And I'm not going about I'm not talking about just a now lay me down to sleep prayer. I mean you really intercede for them. Every day in your prayer time, you put them on your prayer calendar, on your prayer list. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. You need to keep a prayer journal. Or at least you write down people when they ask you to pray for them and what they ask you to pray for them. Why? Because if you're like me, you got a tendency to forget. And when you get in your prayer time list, you've got that laying before you, you forget. You have good intentions, but you forget. But remember, what you make happen for other God will make happen for you, praise God, because it's the law of sowing and reaping. So help extricate others that need a miracle that you need or a miracle that they need in their life. Now, I'll preach this from a different passage and with different highlights of notes. And I preached it from Job 22, 21 through 28. So if y'all would put it on the screen, and I want to go there and summarize it with this, and then we're through this morning. Y'all didn't know I could preach this short, did you? I'm going to get you out early today. Hallelujah. Kelly was amazed that Daddy just had one page of notes this morning. Praise God. You probably amazed too. Hallelujah. Job 22. They'll find it faster than I will. I know it's before Psalms, so I'm getting there. Just hold on. Don't get a knicker, don't knock your knicker, just hold on. Job 22. 
Verse 21. Point yourself with God. What's that? Getting in His presence. Be at peace. Don't be frustrated. Find your promise. Good's going to come to you. Verse 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from His mouth and lay up His words in your heart. That's enrich yourself with the Word of God. Get it in you. If you return to the Almighty, thou be built up, put iniquity far away from you. Enunciate the miracle. When you put the iniquity far away, you get in His presence. Get sin out of life. And then He talks about you'll have plenty of commerce, plenty of money. Verse 26. For then thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto God. That's nothing but praise. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto Him. He shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. That's enunciating your miracle. Expect your miracle to manifest. He said, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto Him, and He shall hear thee. He shall hear thee. That's uh, expecting the miracle to manifest. Thou shalt pay thy vows. Sometimes delays come because we haven't paid our vows. We haven't been as obedient as we need to be to God. We haven't done for others what we said we was going to do. We didn't. And we already looked at praise. And then continually bears the devil your pain. And then you decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. It's amazing. Everything I preach from a different place fits Job 22. These are ways to expedite your miracles, folks. It works. The Word always works. Many times, you and me need a miracle. And I hope, I hope you'll spend some time with these sermon notes this week. Get this in you. Because this is what expedites miracles to us. And we all need them. We all need them. That don't keep us from asking others to pray for us. We need that too. But many times our miracles don't come. It's not because others haven't prayed for us. It's because we've left some stuff undone. We have a true answer will not be made whole. And being made whole requires something of us. Faith requires action. Faith without works is dead. These are active faith things that will expedite miracles to us because it is the Word of God, and the Word of God is what builds our faith. And so we let these things build our faith. When in time of miracles, we need them. We know what to do. We can get on our horse, Clyde, and ride, man, because we're going to go through the storm. It don't mean that we not recognize no storms there. Yeah, it's battered. We're going to come out on the other side sometime, beat up, bloody. But we're going to come through, praise God. And God can heal the wounds when we come out on the other side. Why? Because God is a God of miracles. And He's got one for you. My problem is, usually I need more than one at the same time. So I'm having to work on, work on, work on, work on, work on. And so I challenge you this morning. Do what God prophesied to us in praise. Look past your problem. Look to God. Plug these things in your life and expect a change in your situation. And because you do, it is going to come. Then we all go, well, you know, I know this person had this and we believe him for a miracle. It didn't happen. Are they still breathing? And you're not out of time. If they passed on and they were in Christ, they got a miracle, they got a good miracle. We can't answer those side things. But that still don't mean God is not a God of miracles. We either believe this or don't. We either believe that He is who He says He is or not. So choose to believe what He has told us in His Word. There's a big argument going on about miracles today in Christian circles. 
Don't be caught up in what God cannot do. God can do anything because He's God. And God can do everything. And He just simply tells us, like He did the man with a lunatic son, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. That's pretty straight, isn't it? If we can believe, all things are possible. So this morning, let's be believers. Amen. Let's stand. Thank you for joining us for Life Church broadcast today. We want to hear from you. You can write to us at Post Office Box 1004, Monticello, Arkansas, 71657. Or you can call us at 870-460-0829. Also, check out our new website, www.getlife.co. That's www.getlife.co. There you can find our pastor's sermon notes and see what we're doing all around the world as well as at home. We would love to have you in service with us. Come check us out at Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. or Tuesday evening prayer at 7 p.m. And we would love to see you there. We're located at 910 Old Warren Road, right in Monticello, Arkansas. Now remember, go this week and live to make God look good. God bless you till we're with you again.